Yo yo na ha prato da ha. Om Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwara Guru Shaksha Parabrahma Tasmay Sri Guru Venama Akhanda Mandala Karam Vyaptam Mena Chara Charam Tadpadam Darshitam Mena Tasmay Sri Guru Venama Paise Om Chandanasya Mahalapunyam Pavitram Paparashanam आपदाम हरते नित्यम लक्ष्मीति स्थिति सर्वजा दोनों हाथ जोड़ के नमन कर लें ओम नमो स्वरंता यशाहस्रमुर्ताय साहस्रपादाक्षिशिरुर्वाहवे साहस्रनामे पुरुषाय साश्वते साहस्रकोटि युगधारिणि नमः साहस्रकोटि युगधारिणि नमः This is the moment we were all waiting for. So first I would like to extend the warmest welcome to our beloved Chinui Bayya. Lovingly, <laughs> lovingly we call him Bayya, but he, we all know that these are the parshads of God. You know, when president comes, we all kind of feel so excited. But this is the president of the president of the president. And I'm, I'm so humbled by Bhuya coming here. And really, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, and for my students and GDKLI, we are blessed that you are here today. And I know I was just, before you came, I was telling them a little bit about your life and how much you love humanity and how much you've been traveling throughout the world and how you're inspiring the young children to become, you know, the best that they can become. And excellence in everything you do is what we see in your life. So we would like to extend warm welcome. So our students, Pravin Bhai, Purnima Ben, and our students are going to welcome you. So, Pravin Bhai and Purnima Ben, they are going to introduce um, Adhanya Tripathi Ji and Adhanya Omkar Ji. Pravin Bhai. Namaste everyone. Gayatri Mahamantra, Ek Swarne, Ek Saatne. Om Bhur Bhuvahaswa Tassamitur Vareenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Liyo Yonya Akra Chodaya With the blessings of Guru Sattva and Blessings from other near, Dr. Thirmai Pandya. I was told to introduce uh, Tripathi Ji and Omkar Ji. <coughs> Tripathi Ji and Omkar Ji, they are the most senior representative of Santi Kunj. 
and I know them since so many years. Uh, the party ji maybe like more than 20 years, and Omkar ji was like more than 30 years. <laughs> because you know that when first time you came with Dr. Sahib, we had a program on Long Island in the Queens, you remember that. So, so it was uh, very unique that, and we don't, remember, uh, we don't forget those uh, things. And Tripathi uh, uh, Ji is himself is a lawyer. He was professionally is uh, having a LLM degree uh, from reputed university uh, in India with first class, correct distinction she got. <laughs> yes, and um, with inspiration from Gurudev, he joined the Santi Kunj in 1980, and thereafter in 1988 he came with the family and stayed in the Santi Kunj. And since then, he is traveling to all over the world, uh, Australia, London, UK, uh, US, and so many other countries to spread the message of Gurudev. And uh, Omkarji is always there uh, for the music. And I think, uh, once you listen to him, nobody forgets about him. I think it must be more than thousands of uh, songs will be in your car, correct? Recorded. <laughs> Not only that, he is so good orator also. And he can control the whole public. And I love him. And I love uh, the Tripathi also. So I will not take much time. And we are just here to request them to have their blessings to honor us. Uh, we are just children yet. And um, I wish that our uh, Chichi Kielai, the school, which is started in 2006, 17 years back, with the 20 kids, goes all further and further. And uh, I think today we have a Chimbabaya uh, and these blessings. And his uh, uh, message to us will encourage so many people to join the GGPR. Thank you so much. And now, Omkarji is going, we are going to listen to his song. हर जागेगा इंसान जमाना देखेगा जागेगा इंसान जमाना आप ताली सब लोग बजाएं हाँ आप हो सके तो गाएं भी दो राएं जागेगा इंसान जमाना देखेगा जागेगा इंसान जमाना देखेगा नवयुग का निर्माण जमाना देखेगा नवयुग I'm jagging, I'm sand, I'm not a kid, 
भागेगा इंसान जमाना देखेगा Politics cannot solve the problem. It can provide you the physical facilities only. And the spiritual independence, Jagega in Sanjana Dekega, Adapna Sudantata, Purushka Kondega, is the Gavan de Kahamko Tarana Prada. Rajatantako, Prashkat Karna, Dharatanko Prashkat Karna, or Rajatantako Sudhusat Karna. All the religious system should be purified. Religion should have a purification form. It should change the human personality. It should solve all the problems of society. And the political system should be for the service of the people. Sare Vishyuki Samasyaon ka samadhan adhyatma. Prambhu Jodhira Gita Vikha hai. Ki Vishyuki jitini bhi samasyaye hai, unka samadhan adhyatma se hoga. और अध्यात्म को विवेकानंद ने इसी भूमि में कहा था कि हमको युवाओं में प्रवेश कराना है यूथ में सत्य उगाएगा और यूथ सारे वर्ल्ड की लीडरशिप प्रदान करेंगे स्पिरिचुअल लीडरशिप एटीन नाइनटी थ्री में विवेकानंद ने स्थान कहा था आज उसी वेदन को लेकर के हिमालय के समस्त ऋषियों मुनियों की शक्ति धाराओं को लेकर के मेडिकल साइंस की उच्च स्तरीय रिसर्च सैकड़ों रिसर्च पेपर डॉक्टर जूनियर पंडिया साहब ने इंग्लैंड में प्रोहित किया प्रश्न लिखा पब्लिश किया सारे वर्ल्ड के इंटरनेशनल जर्नल में पब्लिश किया ड्यूरिंग एमबीबीएस मास्टर ऑफ बैचलर ऑफ मेडिसिन एंड सर्जरी एमबीबीएस एमडी डॉक्टर मेडिसिन एम मेंबर ऑफ रॉयल कॉलेज फिजिशियन एल्जाइमर एसोसिएशन के प्रेसिडेंट पद तक गए किस लिए कि मनुष्य का चिंतन शुद्ध हो चिंतन दूषित हो गया है बीमारियां मन में मन तन मन बीमार हो रहा है तो तन बीमार हो रहा है 
तो उसका आध्यात्मिक रूप से कैसे जागरण होगा ये सुनने के लिए हम आप यहां बैठे हुए हैं आध्यात्मिक संपदा सबसे बड़ी संपदा है और जितनी आध्यात्मिक संपदा गायत्री परिवार में है दुनिया में कहीं नहीं है सिर्फ गायत्री परिवार में क्यों क्यों अध्यात्म कहीं है गायत्री परिवार के पास अच्छे व्यक्तियों को संगठित करने के लिए लाल मशाल कहीं है गायत्री परिवार के पास बत्तीस सौ किताबें इस दुनिया में वेद से लेकर के सत्यानी की कथा तक जितनी भी धर्म गुरु सिद्ध पुरुष धरती पर पैदा हुए सभी की जीवनी किसी के पास है गायत्री परिवार के पास और किसी बात नहीं और सबका अपने अपने गुरुओं की जीवनी है लेकिन गायत्री परिवार के पास संत काराम से लेकर के राम बापा से लेकर के और इतने ऋषि मुनियों का नाम तो याद कर सकते तो कि हम लोग तो कभी याद ही नहीं करते थे भी में पढ़ाते थे तो मुकदमे में याद कर पाते थे कि जितने के आपको ऋषियों में नाम याद है हम अधिक समय नहीं लेंगे आप और डॉक्टर के बीच में बस यही निवेदन करने आए हैं कि हम आप बहुत सौभाग्यशाली हैं कि हिमालय की दिव्य शक्तियों की धाराओं का शक्ति को लेकर के जब चौबीस लाख के चौबीस महापुरुष परम भोज गुदर माता जी ने संपन्न किया तो दादा गुरुदेव ने कहा कि बेटा मेरी एक ही इच्छा है क्या इच्छा है मेरी इच्छा तुम्हारी इच्छा नहीं है कि हिमालय की वो शक्ति धारा जो पिछले जन्मों में तुम्हारे साथ रही है वो बेटी बनकर तुम्हारे गोद में खेलना चाहती है गुरुदेव बहुत चौंक गई ये क्या करे मेरे गुरु मुझको बेटी की तो क्या आवश्यकता है मेरे पास तो मेरे गांव के बहुत बच्चे हैं मथुरा के बच्चे हैं जाति परिवार के बच्चे हैं मैं उनको भी पालन पढ़ा रहा हूं दादा गुरुदेव खान मेरी इच्छा है और वो शक्ति सारे विश्व में नारियों की स्थापना करेगी फिर चौबीस वर्ष का चौबीस महापुरुष पूर्ण गुरुदेव ने पूरा किया परम दरिया माता ने चौबीस वर्ष का जब पूरा किया जी जी ने अनुष्ठान किया तो रामनवमी के दिन चौबीस वर्ष बाद परम सद्या जी जी के गर्भ से हिरण्य गर्भ समर्थ दागरे मां काली मां शक्ति मां सरस्वती उनके गर्भ से परम आदरणीय डॉक्टर चिन्ह प्रज्ञाली अवतरी आध्यात्मिक संपदा है किसने भेजा दादा गुरुदेव ने भेजा तो तुम जाओ धरती पर और सारे युवाओं को आध्यात्मिक जागरण करो और इस धरती को राइट फ्रॉम द नॉर्थ पोल टू साउथ पोल आध्यात्मिक स्वतंत्रता प्रदान कराओ एक ऐसा विश्वविद्यालय बनाओ कि ऑक्सफोर्ड कैम्ब्रिज भी तुम्हारे लीडरशिप पे काम करे देखिए वो लीडरशिप डॉक्टर साहब कौन है ऑक्सफोर्ड कैम्ब्रिज को दिशा प्रदान करने वाले देव संस्कृति विश्वविद्यालय के प्रो प्रोफेसर वाइस चांसलर प्रोफेसर मीन्स आचार्य जो आचरण से शिक्षण देता हो और दुनिया के सारे प्रोफेसरों के दिमाग को ठीक करता हो इतनी प्रॉब्लम लड़के ड्रग एडिक्ट हो रहे हैं टेररिस्ट हो रहे हैं माता पिता को सम्मान नहीं कर रहे हैं आपस में भाई बहन में प्रेम नहीं है तो समस्या को किसने पता किया विद टीचर्स मैं तो जब पचास साल यूनिवर्सिटी में रहा लीगल एजुकेशन में आलवेज में यही कहता था कि जो स्टूडेंट्स आर रिफ्लेक्शन द टीचर्स लड़के बर्बाद हो रहे हैं तो मेरी वजह से लड़के के रद्द शामिल आ रहे हैं मेरी वजह से क्योंकि हम लोग टीचर हैं शिक्षक हैं शिक्षा कर्मी गरिमा को समझें पैसे के पीछे भागे बच्चों का निर्माण करें मैं बीस साल हिमालय में रह करके अपने बच्चों का निर्माण करता था कि ये बच्चे जो एल कर रहे हैं निर्म कर रहे हैं जज बनेंगे वकील बनेंगे इंसान तो बने पहले इंसान बने उनसे भी यज्ञ करवाता था और यज्ञ करा करके उनसे शराब जो पीते थे छोड़ते भी थे तो हम आप बहुत भाग्यशाली हैं कि ऐसे विद्वान हम इसी दिन में डॉक्टर बदल कभी नहीं बैठता हूँ बहुत लोग बैठ जाते हैं भाई अब इससे सिद्ध पुरुष का पीछे रहिए वो तो कहते हैं हम बगल बैठो मामा जी हमारे लेकिन शक्ति हमको नहीं मिल पाएगी शक्ति मिलती है श्रद्धा विश्वास और भक्ति से भक्ति जो है इनका से नहीं मिलती तो हम अब अधिक समय नहीं लेंगे परमात्मा डॉक्टर चिन्ह पंडिया जी से हम अनुरोध करेंगे हाँ अब आप हाँ आप बोलिए ये हमारा डॉक्टर प्रज्ञा बहन आपको um we have our, our student shrey is going to introduce dr chinmay priya so come on up this brief just to introduce to the students here it's such a wonderful opportunity that we have today to have dr chinmay priya with us and i'm just going to go through some of the things that he's done of course none of these will speak to his character and his personality and his presence here with us. 
Uh, so Dr. Jinmay Padilla is the grandson of one of the greatest scholars, seers, and philosophers of recent times in India, our own Gurudev, Pandit Sriram Sharmacharya, who himself was the founder of the All World Gayatri Baribar fraternity, which has 100 million members and thousands of global centers for social reform. He currently serves as Pro Vice Chancellor of the Dev Sanskriti Vishwa Vidya Laya University, or DSVB. And following his medical studies in India, he trained in the United Kingdom, where he gained membership of the Royal College of Psychiatrists. In London, he rose to the ranks of the British National Health Service and secured the post of Associate Specialist in Older People Services at the West London Mental Health Trust. In this capacity, he managed patients with multiple psychiatric disorders focused on treatment of dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. He returned to India and DSVB in 2010, heeding an inner calling. Today, Dr. Pandya occupies multiple roles in the life of his university and beyond. He is the editor of Dev Sanskriti, an interdisciplinary international journal that addresses a broad range of Indian intellectual interests including Vedic philosophy, culture, psychology, communication, education, Ayurveda, Indian and Eastern studies, and religious pedagogies. As Vice President of Indian Yoga Association, he leads efforts to analyze and advance the scientific and philosophical understanding of yoga, meditation, and stress management in contemporary contexts. He is chairperson of the International Festival of Yoga, Culture, and Spirituality, and has convened more than 200 national and international colloquia at the university on issues ranging from the rights of indigenous people to water desalination. He is responsible for ethos, academic rigor, and policy implementation at the university. Dr. Pandya serves on the governing board of the Indian Council for Cultural Relations, is a member of the advisory council of the Ministry of Ayurveda, Yoga, and Naturopathy, Unani, Siddha, and Homeopathy, is part of the Syllabus Restructuring Committee of the National Council for Teachers' Education and is one of five institutional leaders from around the world, including those from the University of Cambridge and the University of Virginia, to be a director of the Global Covenant of Religions. Apart from being the chairman of Asia's first and only center for Baltic Culture and Studies and South Asian Institute of Peace and Reconciliation, he is also the founder patron of Rishikhar University in India. I want to emphasize to all the students here that it is very rare that we have such a privilege and honor to meet someone like this and to even hear him in the same room. So I request all the students and of course all the parents here with us, thank you all for coming. And it is an honor to welcome Dr. Pandya to our humble gathering. I hope all of you have a very, very good evening. Thank you again, Dr. Most generous introduction. Whatever we are able to do is only because of the blessings of Gurudev. So I would like to start uh, remembering Puji Gurudev Vandaniya Mataji and Mahayatri with the hope and belief that this uh, gathering that we have got here in the Long Island, in this beautiful uh, vicinity, it would allow us to think, contemplate, and uh, remember the divine purpose that Puja Gurudev Mundaniya Mataji instilled for the Gayatri Parivar to come together. So in the subtle presence of Puja Gurudev Mundaniya Mataji, allow me to start with the recitation of the Gayatri Mantra. Most of us are fully aware of the beauty and the pristine understanding of the Gayatri Mantra and the philosophy behind it. It's one of the rarest uh, mantra coming from the Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Tharveda and Samved, which is designed with a very peculiar understanding and purpose. Gayatri is called Tripada. Tri means three, Pada means the steps. And each step of the Gayatri mantra is asking for three different objectives to be accomplished. It's asking for the purification, asking for the illumination, asking for the enlightenment. For I to be a better human being than what I was yesterday. For us to go high up in our life and only for the reason that to do bad things in life, we need no training. Nothing is needed. If we take a glass of water, a pill, 
and push it. It goes down without anyone telling where it to go. The gravity would take it. But for same water to be taken uphill, you need all the efforts, you need to have the electricity, you need to have the motor, you need to have the pipe. You need to make all the efforts. Meteors are coming to the planet. They need nothing. The gravity would pull them. But if you want to um, send in SpaceX, you need triagenic engine. You need to make all the efforts. To do bad things in life, nobody needs anything. Somebody is walking on the street and someone comes to stab him. He doesn't need a degree from a university that I can kill people. I've got the best diploma in the world. But to repair the world, you need to be a qualified doctor. To do good things in life, not only we need sahas, courage, determination, sankar, but we also need some direction, the divine protection. And that is what we ask in the mantra of Kayatri, take us to the righteous path in the life. Not the path that we seek and desire, but the path that is right for me. That is the whole call of this prayer. What is right for me would be different than what I want in my life. There is a beautiful story that comes in Mahabharata. It's a story of Duryodhan. Everyone knows him. He was the brother of Yudhishthir. Duryodhana is known to do everything wrong in the life of Dharma. Yudhishthir is known to do everything right in the life of Dharma. So the uncle was confused. He asked Duryodhana, he said that, tell me one thing, you both went to the same school, had the same teachers, Dronachar and Kripachar, they taught you. Then how come your brother is doing everything right and you are doing everything wrong? And Duryodhan said, Jana pe dharmam nacha me pravratte. I know what is dharma, I know what is right, I won't do it. Jana pe adharmam nacha me nevratte. I know what is wrong, I would not leave it. Keno pe devena hridhisthate yatha niyuktes tatha karona. It's like somebody is sitting inside me and wherever it niyukt me, appoint me, I feel obliged to do it. Everyone knows what is right and wrong, but people do the wrong because it's the easier path to take. For us to take the right path, not only we need information, but we also need determination. That is what we are asking. In the month of Gayatri, we ask us to be blessed with the determination to walk on the right path. So let's send the month of Gayatri together with a prayer to help us to walk on the right path with courage, determination, sahas and sankalpa.
not only the future of Long Island, but also the future of death as well in the entire humanity. This is the 50th year, or 52nd year of the establishment of the Shanti Kunj death. One question we should be asking, that when Gurudev established uh, Shanti Kunj in 1971, there were already 13,000 ashrams in Haripla. Uh, almost everywhere you go in India, you will find a temple. You are not short of temples. You go extreme north, where the boundary between India and, and Pakistan and India between China is being drawn. It's actually drawn by the temple. There is Deshwarnath on this side, there is Narakmat on the other side. If you go to the Arunachal Pradesh, there is a temple that's making the boundary between India and China. If you go to the south, actually temple is making the boundary of India and the Indian Ocean. That's where the Vivekananda went and established the Vivekananda temple in the Kanyakumari. That's the end of the like, you know, southern border of India. So you go anywhere in India, you will find many temples. The question that is worth asking is why would Gurudev wish to create a reservoir? Where there were so many already in the land of Ritwar, in the holy land where like Maganga is flowing, mighty Himalayas is standing right beside us. What is the reason for another one to be created? Because it's not a temple. That's the beauty of Shanti and that's the beauty of the death of Parivar. 1971, when Gurudev talked about Shanti Kunj to be established, if he only wanted a temple to be erected or established, then he could have done it in 1951. One of the richest person of India, Mr. Birla, went to him. Uh, his son was a follower of Gurudev, Vasant Kumar Birla. And he went to Gurudev with 1 billion rupees in 1951. Imagine. That's a heavy amount of money. Still, in 1951, it was even much more like an hefty amount. They went to Gurudev and offered him, and he said, Gurudev, make a gold temple like no one has seen. You want a gold temple with the, with the diamond statue of Magaitri. You are the biggest sadhak of Magaitri on the planet. Make a temple like, you know, people would come to see it from long, long distances, like a temple no one has seen. And Gurudev refused. Gurudev said, that I don't touch the money, I'm not going to take it from you. He said, but tell me one thing. If God sits in a gold temple, and people don't have food outside, how would God feel? He said, why don't you make a school, a hospital, a college, an academic institution, they are the temple. I said, if I ever have to ask God to sit somewhere, it won't be in a gold temple. It would be in the heart of the people. They should do it. The idea of creating the Gayatri Parivar was that we all should be the divine embodiment of the divinity. We all should be the representative and ambassadors of the divine power that is all around us. Our personality should be like a temple. When people would meet, they would feel that they have got the same light as we see in the temple. When people would meet, they would feel that they had the same sweetness in their personality that we find in the prasad of the temple. That was the idea for Gurudev to establish the Gaitya Parivar. The idea was that changing from outside is easy. Anyone can wear a dress and become a servant. But changing from inside is the main thing. Until unless we are able to change the personality of the person <coughs> or them from within, there is no sustainable change in their personality and there is no sustainable change in the way they think and behave and their mindset is not changed. There could be no permanent and sustainable solution. I don't know how many of you had tried Pragya Pay, but like you know, the Pragya Pay is the drink that is created in Shanti Kun by Gurudev with 14 herbs inside, there is no sugar, fully organic, natural. First time it was created, the man who did it, he went to Gurudev and he said to Gurudev, he said, Gurudev, how much should we price it? Kya naam rakhi iska? He asked him, Gurudev, three times and Gurudev did not give an answer. Third time he asked, Gurudev said, Bita, Shanti Kun jaya to pahane mein bhul to nahi bhe. When you came to Shanti Kun, hope you that you were not mistaken. Hum logo ne ashram khula hai, but they said, hum logo ne dukaan nahi khuli. They haven't opened a shop. It's an ashram. Mali to hajar rupay ka nuksaan nahi kar kiya, par hajar achse insaan nahi kar kiya. Bring a loss of thousand rupees 
we can face it. But we need thousand good people who can change the world. The idea is that world is a very challenging place, not only because of the people who are bad, but also because of the people who are good and they don't do anything about it. When we see, like, you know, if we ask the, the challenges of the current times, we don't have to go far. If we just go and ask ourselves with heart and our um, hand in our, our, our hearts, and we see, like, you know, the, the consciousness of the people that's so polluted and, and, and uh, deprived of the concept of humanity these days. You go from Alaska to Azerbaijan and what you will find that we have been trying so hard to bring the prosperity from outside that we make people deprived of humanity from inside. People have got prosperity but no contentment. They have got money but no satisfaction. They have got huge houses to live in but families are gone. We have given them everything but we have deprive them of the essential integrity of the humanity and compassion. That's the challenge of current time. And the reason is because we have been dreaming a dream. A dream from which we hope that we are making up. A dream that if you just give money and, and prosperity to every single soul, then they would be miraculously happy. And that's not the solution. When like, you know, the struggle for survival gets subsided, then the real question of life just start to emerge. Survival for what? Now people have means to live, but no meaning to live for. To give meaning in the life, to have the purpose, to have the direction of the life, that's where the Dacti Parivar was instituted. The reason I am saying all this, that you know this world, whichever direction it is going, if it was enough to give satisfaction and contentment and purpose and agenda and, and motive to every single soul, we would have a very happy society. And it's not there. It's not there. And to change that from within, that's the reason that Gurudev established the death of Parva. And the reason I'm sharing all these stories, we don't have much time, but the reason I'm sharing all these incidences and stories is to help us remember that what kind of divine plan we are the members of. We are the members of a huge call from the high above, where everyone has been asked to accomplish something that was never done before. 1987, January, they wrote an article, I still remember it. He said that current times may look dark and gloomy, but they should not bring fear or despair to us. Rather, we should embrace them like a call of action. We should think that this is the first time in the history of humanity where we have been asked to accomplish that was never accomplished before, which is to fight the misfortune together. It's not a problem of America, it's not a problem of Long Island, it's not a problem of Haridwar, it's not a problem of India anymore. It's a problem of humanity. And that can only be changed if everyone comes together to change it. So the call of today is that we should all do something which was never done before. The reason Gayatri was instituted, established, created, fashioned by Gurudev was only for one purpose is to give a sustainable solution and that can only emerge if people are changed from within. Outside I am carrying the mobile set. It can be switched off any moment. But inside is the SIM. And that SIM needs to be upgraded. Unless I change the way I think, unless the way I change the emote, unless the way I change the, the way I behave, my actions, my thoughts, my emotions, they are not purified and embellished. There could be no sustainable solution. The whole reason for that Parivar to exist is to give that direction to the humanity. So the reason I am sharing it is that if we can take that sankal to that message from here, today, that what we can do to make that happen. When I stand here, when I come to Long Island, Balsan Shala, I feel so happy. Because when I see this future that is here, and Pagya Ben and the entire team of the teachers of the Vatsal Skaishala who have been working hard to make that happen. I have got nothing but words of great appreciation for them. I have seen it grow from like you know the three or four kids to now 120 there. And it's not only a Vatsal Skaishala, it's not only a school, it's the future. Light has to emerge from somewhere. And if it is emerging from you guys, then it's the future for humanity. I have got uh, so much 
like you know, uh, praise, admiration, appreciation for everything that's been done here. And I hope that it would continue to flourish. I hope that every single student who would graduate from this Parsons Karshala would not only take the great message, but they would be the great uh, ambassadors, representatives of the divine purpose that would be wanted to have in every single member of the Gayatri Parivar. So today I stand here not only with the appreciation, but also with an hope and optimism for future. The world that we have got, like I said, is, is crumbling in front of our eyes. Um, not, I'm not only going to talk about everything negative. There are also good things that are happening around us, and this is one of those things. <laughs> the Balsans Kashala here, everything that we are doing, kids that are sitting in the front lines, I know that today is a very hard day, it's Tuesday, you all at your schools and everything. Still, you could come and spare your time and uh, uh, it's been like, you know, a privilege to see all of you. <laughs> last thing that I would like to share, like, you know, is to uh, what kind of message we should take from here. Few things I would say. One thing I would say that do not go without a determining a purpose in your life. If your Baal Sanskar Shala, whenever like you know those days are finished, remember that everyone has got a strong power in their hands. If we can determine our purpose, we can change the world. I give you a few examples. There is a lady who was uh, given the highest civilian award of India uh, two years ago. Her name is Suhasi Nivistri. Comes from a very small village in West Bengal called Medhulipur. She had four children. The youngest one was three months old. And her husband contracted an infection. And before he could receive the right medical treatment, he died. So this lady who is a vegetable vendor, no formal education, became widow at the age of 21, had four mouths to feed. She decided that she will open a hospital in the village. And everyone laughed. They said that you can't even have the food in the evening. How would you have the hospital in the village? But fast forward that story to 34 years. One of her son, Ajay, became a, a, a doctor. He was given a very good job in one of the famous hospitals of India called Polo. Left it, went back to the village. When he went back to the village, then everyone thought that how come he came from such a humble background, such a like you know underprivileged background? Why did he leave such a beautiful job and went back to the village? So the professors, peers, colleagues, they all went to the village to speak with the uh, son. But when they went there and they heard the story of Suhasini Mistri, everyone cried. 37 years were gone. And there was nothing, not a single penny that she saved for herself. Nothing for the house, nothing for the family, nothing for the children, nothing for the kids. All she was saving was saving to open a hospital in the village. 37 years were gone, how much she could save? 22,000 rupees, 250 dollars. You can't have a hospital in that amount. But when people heard, one person decided to give the land for free. Builders said we will build it for free. Electricians said we will fit it for free. Plumbers said we will fit it for free. Doctors said we will treat it for free. Pharmacists said we will give the medicines for free. And she opened a hospital 12 years ago called Humanity Hospital. From poor for poor, was given the Padma Shri Award two years ago. <laughs> and he was a and they said such a beautiful thing. He said, without a purpose, our life is like a pendulum. Moving a lot, reaching nowhere. We confuse being busy with having a purpose. A purpose does not come from what we do, but why we do it. Fasi par to hatkara bhi chadta hai, bhagat singh bhi chadta hai, parantar badal jata hai, karan badal jata hai. Why we are doing certain thing, that determines our intention decides our purpose. So I will say that everyone has got a strong power in their hands of a purpose. If we all can have a purpose, if we all can have a direction, we don't know the power of it. There is an entire city established by one farmer in India called Hajari Bar. He, Hajar means thousand. Every morning he used to go plant two trees of mango in the morning, two in the afternoon. In his lifetime he inspired for 87,000 trees to be planted, created the entire city. So imagine how much power we have. We have the power to change the whole world. So I would say that 
Every single person, no matter how big you are, how small you are, you have the power. There is a man in Australia who was given the highest civilian award that any Australian could receive about 12 years ago. Then he was given the knighthood by England, then he was given the, the highest award, the Legion d'Honneur from France. And what did he do? What kind of education he had? He's a bricklayer, he did not have any education, he was building the houses, he was just a builder. Why he was given such a high accolade? Because when he was 13 years old, some of you may be 13 years old, he was coming on a bike, had an accident, a, like you know, lying in the pool of blood, people took him to the hospital, 14 people donated blood to save his life. And when he came out of the hospital, he said, the first thing I would do when I would turn 18, which is the legal age to donate blood, is that I will donate blood. And he wanted to, in his mind, he wanted to donate 40 units of blood so that he could repay those people who saved his life. Turned 18, had his birthday celebration, went to the hospital, and if you give the blood, then they check that your blood is safe enough to be given to other people. They checked it, and they found that he had a special protein. If his blood was given to those babies, whose mother and father have got different blood groups. We call medically, some of you may be coming from medical background, it's called rhesus incompatibility. It's coming from rhesus factor. So rhesus factor, if it's mismatching, then it makes it harder for those kids to survive. But if his blood was given to those babies, their life would be saved. So from the age of 18, which is the lowest stage when anyone could donate blood, to the age of 81, which is the highest stage when anyone could donate blood, this one man donated 1,386 units of blood plasma. <laughs> to 3.2 million babies. How many? 3.2 million babies. This blood was sent to 34 different countries. Imagine the power. The power every single of you have got. Everyone has got the power to change the world. We don't need other people. We need one person with courage, determination, right direction, right values in their heart to change it. That's it. That's the only thing what they've asked for. Ask for everyone to stand wherever they are. If one person is standing, ten would stand. Ten are standing, hundred would stand. Hundred are standing, thousand would stand. Thousand are standing, one million would stand. One million are standing, whole world would stand. We just need one to start the revolution. The idea is that we should go with that kind of feeling in our heart. And everyone has got such a beautiful power. Uh, I don't know how many of you have been to India, but if you go uh, if at the airport, you would see the food mart. And that comes from a very interesting person called Sharat Chandinamalai. And Sharat Chandinamalai's mother used to sell idlis at the Chennai railway station coming from a very poor and deprived background. But he secured one of the prestigious scholarships of India, went to IIT, uh, got his MTech from IIT. Then he went to Ahmedabad, IIM Ahmedabad, did his MBA. In 1980, when he was offered a job worth uh, close to 81 lakh, uh, I don't know how much that would be in, in, uh, in dollars, but a heavy amount of money in 1981. 81 lakh rupees per annum he was given. And he said, I won't go to US. What would you do? I will open a business. What kind of business? I will sell it lease. People thought he is one man. Like, you know, you've got such a beautiful job, you've secured, you're coming from a deprived background, you've secured IIT, IIM. Now, like, you know, without, in 1981, not many people were offered that kind of package. And people said, you lost your marbles. But he said, no, I will do it. So he started to sell the lease. Fast forward the story by 30 years, he became one of the pioneers of establishing the food marts in the Indian Air Force. Everywhere you go, you will find it. But that's not the reason why I'm sharing. Many people are like, you know, self-made and they have created the history. The reason I'm sharing is so beautiful. Financial Times took his interview in 2008. And they asked him that now everyone is busy. Everyone is saying like you did the right thing of coming and establishing all this. But when 30 years ago, like you know, a long time ago, you refused it, why did you do it? And he gave three answers and remember those answers. He said, first thing, I wanted to do something for my mother. She really worked hard 
two days ago. We had no money and she was selling the idlis at the railway station. And I wanted to give my Shraddhanjali back to her. You know, you sell Ferraris, then it's a business. You sell idlis, it's not a business. I wanted to prove that whatever you would do, you still have capacity to change the world. It's just your heart, how you put into it. You still have the, the power to change it, provided you do it with the right intention. So I said, I wanted to do it. Second, he said, I wanted to do it because when I was in the Bits Pilani, he was doing his, like, you know, fellowship there. He said, I went to a river nearby. And when I was, uh, like, if I went inside, I started to drown. My friend jumped to save me. He said, uh, like, you know, he could save me, but he died, unfortunately. So that day I decided the body is mine, but I borrowed it from my friend. Body is mine, but I borrowed it from my friend. And I would not do anything wrong with it. So second reason was that I wanted to gift it back to my friend. Third thing he said, he said, there was so much unemployment. People get the PhDs and still can't do anything with people. Who would think about the people who have just passed their 10th and 12th? That's why we passed on the So what he did is so special. What he did is that he created the entire network of this idli.com and so many other chains that he created with only one rule. Rule was that he would only employ the people who are 10th and 12th pass. And he trained them for six months for free. And this single man created the employment for how many people? 15,000 people. So imagine the power that you have come. The reason I am saying it, maybe 30 years down the line, some of you would become the CEO of a big company. And the signature that you would make would have the power to change the life of so many people. If you would remember this compassion, this purpose that's been gifted to you, it can change the whole world. I'm not talking to you right now, I'm talking to the person who would be sitting 30 years in front of us. And I hope that you all would reach to the successful positions, not only successful in the sense of getting the prosperity, but also successful in terms of getting the contentment, that I am doing something right. So I hope that you would uh, remember the whole purpose of this Sanskash, and I am sure you would, because uh, the uh, values and, and like, you know, the whole ethos and fabric that's been uh, involved in fashioning your lives here is already um, worth it. So I hope that one thing that you would be able to take from here is the purpose and uh, the power to change the world. So although I was not intending to speak this long, I did. And uh, I hope that uh, there were some messages worth uh, remembering for all of you. If uh, you haven't been to Haridwar so far, then you should definitely. So it's not only uh, a talk, but also an invitation for all of you to come to Aradhuva. You would find it such a beautiful place. The ashram is sprawling across 500 acres. 25,000 people can live there at any moment in time. And Gurudev created it with such a beautiful ideology. There is not even a single penny that's been charged. Thousands of people come every day. I was telling in the car that from last May to now, we every single day, every single day we had a visitor strength of 50,000 people going to Aradhuva. And not a single day. Never ever a pesa was charged to anyone because Gurudev said if we wanted to charge the money, we would have opened a hotel. What's the point of opening an ashram and charging money for it? So it's absolutely free. It's not the invitation is not there for monetary expectation. The invitation is there for the reason what Gurudev said. That come there, everything is free, but in return you become the message. When you return from there, then you should become the message. Message everywhere. And like I always say that, you know, um, when Bhagirat did the Tapasya and Ganga came, he could have stopped and said like, you know, my purpose is solved. He wanted to remove the curse of the parents, like, you know, ancestors. And he could have said that my purpose is then, why should I go anywhere? But he did not. He started from Gomuk, went all the way to Ganga Sagar, 2,525 kilometer long journey he took. 
Why? For humanity. So if something good is happening to you, then that sanskar shala is only worth if you take that sanskar to other people. Bring more, change them, make their lives better. And when you all the small kids that are sitting here, you become slightly more ordered, then you should become the mentor of the younger brother and sister. Change their lives. Change their lives and give them the direction. Like Shri Bhaiya is doing for you, you should do it for other people. So I hope, like you know, you would uh, go happy to your homes with sanskar, values, and a good direction in your life. Pranams to all of you, pranams to your parents for being here on this Tuesday afternoon, pranams to the entire team of Baal Sanskar Shala here. Thanks for being here and thanks for so patiently listening. Uh, if, uh, you know, if anything was not clear, it's only because of the fact that America has kept a tradition that every single flight I have taken since I arrived here <laughs> had been, had been late. <laughs> and I hope it would change before I return back to India. So my pronouns. <laughs>